this is hello, this is Peter Lander again, and we're back on the master controller. And now we're going to cover RF commands, right? So just a reminder: RF commands are issued by the radio system via an antenna, and they are received by all devices on the same battle. It won't work on the ones that are not the same battle. Now, there's a series of RF commands, and I'm going to go through those now with you. So I've got a master controller here, and I've set it to RF commands. I'm going to pull the trigger. Use the red button to go to the first one. The first one is pause, but this is pause radio. So this will affect every device, right, other than a mouse controller, on the same banner. So this one's now paused, right? And I can then go next command, which is resume, which starts it up again. See, that's resumed. So that, and I didn't have to really aim at that, I'm going to be pointing in any direction for this radio system. Um, you know, obviously when you're doing any RF commands, it's a good idea to try and have your master controller so, such that the antenna is running vertically. It will then tend to transmit out this way rather than um, up and down. You have it on the side or whatever, you're going to get a poorer performance. Um, so, and it's pretty similar to the uh, receiving uh, gaming guns. You know, if, if they're actually in an upright position at the time, the, the antenna up, you're going to get better reception if they're lying down on the ground or on their side, and you know, if the players are actually in a, uh, or behind like a serious uh, building or in a trench, I mean, it's gonna affect performance, but you still should generally um, get 80 to 100 meters, but it really does depend on the battlefield. Um, if you're using a larger battlefield, look, um, a radio repeater is a really good idea. Um, you can take a spare gaming gun, or if you've got a spare, and configure it as a radio repeater and put that on some high ground somewhere to, to, re, to bounce your um, start and end signals um, around the battlefield. Uh, uh, look, kind of in a dense jungle field like we have at Thunderbird Park, I, I'll often actually have two radio repeaters set up uh, to bounce the signal all the way down so that um, everyone starts. So I resume, I've got an end command, so I just end the game. Right? Now here's the trigger, I've got to pull the trigger, then I have to push the red button once to confirm that I want to end the game and then pull the trigger. Now, this is because do we done this on the confirm because you don't want to accidentally end the game right, that'd be bad so um, and so you have to confirm and similarly if you're doing a start all right it should be right I go I have to confirm before, and then so it's trigger red button trigger to confirm right now after the end command the next thing actually says um, Game timer. Now, the game timer in itself is not an RF command, but it is. Uh, it it belongs here because the next command after game timer is start, and when you start a game and you set a time game, it's going to run for that amount of time before the game automatically ends. This is a great feature. I, I love time games. Ever since I've had time games, I my sessions that I run, and I run a lot of sessions still, uh, tend to run on time. Um, I don't have to keep watching my watch to find out where we're up to. It, ju it just runs. And the beautiful thing about Satire 2 in this regard is that every 30 seconds the master controller will pulse the timer out and the, the gaming guns will receive that pulse if they're in an RF range and that will show how much time left in the game on the bottom right hand side of their LCD. So the players don't have to ask you how much time left, but, you know, they know it's actually on their display. So it, that, that's, a, that's a really cool feature of Santa. So the game time menu, I'm gonna pull the trigger, and I'm gonna use my red button to set that to timed. So, and then I'm gonna pull the trigger, and then I'm gonna set how much time. So I might set like a five minute game, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is start, red button to confirm. All right, so that started a timer, and now, there, on my display here, there, it says how long is left. In this case, it's four minutes and 49 seconds as we speak, All right? And on the LCD on here, um, this has synced in already, and now it's four minutes and 39 seconds. It's showing on, on the LCD on the rear here. So that's for the players, all right? And that's a really, really good feature. The next feature, um, is clear stats and uh, what this is is basically aimed at the session stats right 
Session stats is accumulated stats of all the games you played, or all the missions you played, and since the gaming gun was turned on. Um, but sometimes you you might issue the gaming guns for use of players, and you haven't turned them off and on the process, in which case just do a quick clear stats, it'll send it back to, to zero, and then the session stats will start from there. Um, often the way we run on the battlefield, in fact, is as people arrive, they're registered, they get dressed, we issue the gaming guns turned on, right, and ready. And we set up a couple of mini boxes and people will nail each other while we're getting everyone through. Bear in mind, we run like quite large sessions. Uh, our average session size is about 60. Um, I ran a group last week for 260. Um, the at once, it's a big game. It was a, it was a 135 by about 125 um, church group. And um, we can issue the guns, we can issue the mini boxes, they were all zapping each other while we get it all through. And then when we're ready to brief them, you do a pause radio. Right? right? And I also do a clear stats because, because they're already getting hits and kills and stats before I start the first game. So I want to clear that just before I start the first game, right? So very many times before your first game. If you don't remember, it's not a big deal, but hey, it's it's that's why it's there, you know, you do the clear stats. So just do clear stats. Yeah, so it's done. And then and then I make it uh, click on back to the main menu. So that's what the RF commands are for. Um, they really, really help you run a session really efficiently. Look, and I think that's something look, Battleford Sports, because we are operators, we um, have been, I've been operating games for 15 years. I've always been striving for um, how do we run really compelling games? How do we do it practically? Um, how do we do it on the lowest staff requirements? Um, because that's a very key ratio when you're running this, you know, how many staff um, versus how many players you've got and how efficiently they can run. Yet, yet, make it very important that the games are fantastic and fun for the players. Cool. See you for the next video on settings.